That should be okay right there. I think I'll come a little closer, maybe. But yeah, that'll be good right there. Okay. Okay. I should get it level. Hang on. Good. And Korea, come. Hey, look. This is Ayla, Swedish elk hound, and I got Korea, Norwegian elk hound, both females, both in our breeding program. Both of these have ancestors in Finland and Sweden. These are, Ayla was born here, so was Korea, but Ayla's parents were born in Finland and Korea's father was born in Finland. Now, what I wanted to do today was do a little bit of a learning video. I know a lot of people are at home during the COVID shutdown, isolation and quarantine and stuff, same here. So we're, uh, we're up on the mountain here today and I wanted to do this video. Um, we, we've been having a fun time up here, of course. My life hasn't exactly changed all that much because I'm in isolation all the time. But uh, we are, uh, we are uh, not going to town and stuff like that. So I'm up here. Hey, Hark, take it easy. Hark wants to come for the video too, but uh, he's just going to have to stay there. So I, uh, I just wanted to, uh, you know, tell everybody, wow, it's just a crazy time out there, but uh, hats off to all the healthcare professionals around the world, boy, they're doing a world-class job, doing all they can do, and uh, we're, we're all out here trying to do our part, keeping distance and social, physical, all of that stuff, we're trying our best too, so trying not to, uh, to cause any more havoc than what's already there, so uh, we're all trying. But uh, the healthcare folks, boy, they're, I mean, they should uh, give them hazard pay, <laughs> I'll tell you. I, I, I would not want to be a doctor or nurse right now. That's, that's a fact. Well, maybe, maybe if a guy had a really good heart and he wanted to do a lot for good people, maybe. But uh, I'd be too scared, I'm sure. So I probably couldn't do a good job. Come, Ayla, bring her here. Ayla, you just stay by me. Good girl. That way she'll stay. You oh, such a good girl. What a good girl. Good. Good. Very good. You girls are good. You girls are good. All you girls are good. So I wanted to talk today a little bit about uh, the health aspects of bringing a dog into Canada to give you, because, I mean, it's on top of everybody's mind these days, all this uh, transmission and viruses and quarantines and everything. So I thought, well, I'll just quickly outline how, how it works for your dogs in Canada. As you know, I brought in the father of that little pup just last, just last uh, spring, early spring. And uh, we follow all the guidelines that uh, dogs go under to come into Canada. And it's one of the most stringent requirements of any country in the world, of course. And not, not all breeders follow it. They... They circumvent it if they can because it's so extensive, but we don't. We follow it to the letter, and I'll tell you how she all works. But uh, the process is quite unique. You've got to, uh, come girl. You've got to go ahead and get an application done first so that they allow you to, uh, to proceed. And then there's a very lengthy questionnaire to go through, and you have to do all of that to, uh, Ayla, you bring her here. Ayla. Just stay by me, Ayla. That's my girl. 
You stay and she'll stay. Good. You just stay by me. That's my girl. That's my girl. And uh, so once you have that application done, then you can proceed to follow the procedures. Now, in, uh, in Canada, the first step, of course, is the, uh, the breeders, where the dog originates, has to follow a set of guidelines and has to be actually uh, inspected and quarantined basically for a 90-day window and free from any disease at all, any issue at all in their operation. So I have to hire a veterinarian in those countries where, and this happens to be Finland where I had to do this. All three dogs came from Finland. So the, uh, I hire the vet to, to follow that procedure for the 90 days on all three breeding operations. And if the dogs end up in another location, I have to do it on that one too. And in this case, I did. I had four locations because I took all three dogs to a fourth location uh, to have Satu look after them. So first off was to get that started so that uh, they were all cleared. Next, of course, there's certain protocols for vaccination and they have to be followed explicitly and all the forms and paperwork have to be on the Canadian Health Guideline forms, not Finnish forms. So immediately, of course, I need to have a Finnish, a, a Finnish vet who speaks English and can read my forms. I then get all the necessary forms, documentation and procedures and I send them to them and they fill them out according to the forms that we have, not their forms. Now in that process, of course, the vaccinations are done at seven weeks, at 12 weeks, at 16 weeks. The registrations are done with the Finnish Kennel Clubs. Uh, all of those procedures are followed. The dogs are quarantined uh, for a window of time from the second. Ark, you settle down. The dogs are quarantined from the second to the third vaccinations. And uh, those that's why we sent them over to Statu. And so those dogs were quarantined there under safe uh, guidelines according to the, the uh, uh, Canadian uh, re requirements. And then uh, finally, uh, just at the, at the end of most of that, of course, there's a final health inspection and that health inspection has to be done within 48 hours of landing in Canada. Now that put me under a fair bit of stress because it's a long flight. There's, there's stops, there's... Um, anyway, I had to bring the vet in on a Sunday at four o'clock precisely, and he had to do the uh, health inspections on the pups right after four o'clock so that it met when they landed uh, inside that time frame. So the costs just balloon uh, with all of these procedures, but that's the way it is. Now, the second step, of course, is arranging all the flights to match the, the carrier. The, the airline has requirements, so I had to meet all of those. All of those papers were done. The crates were matched to what they allow, all of that. Then I had to set up a secure biosafe uh, facility uh, to overnight the pups because the flight was was too long so we overnight in Amsterdam so we have that set up there uh, everything paid to to house those pups in a secure facility look after them everything it's uh, very very costly then once they get to Vancouver of course uh, Vancouver when they land there I have to arrange a bio bonded uh, kennel. It's a bio-safe, uh, secure kennel, meaning uh, uh, no people go in it, just uh, it, it's extremely clean. So what happens is uh, when the pup lands in Vancouver, I don't get to see the pup and the pup cannot be released into the public. The pup has to go right from the airport into a carrier Comes, I hire a carrier, a bonded carrier, to come from the kennel, the bonded kennel, 
and they pick up the pups, they take the pups in their secure facility truck and they take them over to their place and they're quarantined there. Now, the, the uh, procedures are so intense because that pup cannot touch anything on the way. It comes off the plane, the bonded carrier is there, loads them onto his cart, his cart goes out, goes back into his truck and those dogs drive over to that uh, bonded kennel. That kennel is secure and all those dogs that are inside there are, are uh, breeding dogs basically. Very, very expensive dogs too of course. So that's a locked secure facility, you don't get in there. Anyway, they don't, uh, they don't release that pup. So the next day then, of course, the vet from Canada Health and Agriculture goes there and inspects all of the pups, and in my case, I had three. He inspects all the pups. It was a female, the woman. So uh, she inspected all the pups and gives the release form to the kennel. The kennel then can call me. I can now come to the front of the kennel, get all the documentation. I then have to drive across Vancouver to uh, the uh, CBSA, and I go then through my import procedures that I've got clearance from the vets, all the documentation from the from the uh, border uh, crossing people, everything that they came in on such and such a flight, such and such a time, everything. And I get clearance there that I now can take this and go back to the kennel and now I finally get to see the pups. And so in the meantime, of course, we all stayed overnight in Vancouver while this process was going. And now the pups are finally released to me. So there's a, there's a very, very strict uh, procedure to import dogs into Canada. It's, it's so intense. And it always baffles me that the virus was going on, we were all well aware of it, and we were still just letting people fly in like crazy, right? Whereas there was absolutely nothing going on with the dogs in Finland. There was nothing wrong with any of them, but they put me through the hoops, boy, to get those dogs in and to do it correctly and quarantine them and inspect them. And, and uh, the amount of money that you spend to, to follow all these guidelines and all these procedures and... Uh, the, the overabundance of caution is just wild, and yet we just fly people in coughing and sick like nothing, just walk right in the door. So it's, it's pretty bizarre. And I thought, well, now I would be an okay time to talk about this. Now, I've been involved in livestock since forever. Uh, I grew up with it, right? So I, I've been around biosecurity on farms my entire time. And, uh, you know, we had foot baths going in. We changed our clothes in the hog barn. We did not let anybody in the yard. I mean, that we had a farrow to finish barn, and that thing was secure. Um, all the calves, uh, it was just, you, you were very, very cautious about your livestock, and we treated uh, disease extremely important and, and followed all of the safety measures in our barns to make sure absolutely nothing got in there. I mean, we'd change clothes in the barn, wash those clothes, sanitize absolutely everything, no street clothes in there, none of that stuff. No visitors, no guests, no nothing. Uh, the vet, I'll tell you what, boy, he's, he's in protective gear, puts rubber li liners on his boots, you know, he's got a brand new set of coveralls, absolutely everything, he comes in there, he knows how to how to behave. Ark, settle down. So we've been doing that, that was 45 years ago, was doing that, and uh, we've been following that for years, uh, it's, it's just, for me, a way of life because of the livestock, and I, you know, I... It, it's not so foreign all this uh, procedure to to sanitize and to keep things clean and not have people in and that's why I like this location it's so remote I don't run into other dogs I don't have other people I don't have anybody coming it's very safe but highlighting the procedure to bring a dog in 
is is a thousand times, a hundred thousand times safer than it is to bring people into this country. It's bizarre. So um, those kinds of things, we, we should make some changes, I think. But potentially, maybe we do now. But that's the procedure to get a dog into Canada. And, and when, you, when you bring in breeding stock, you have to identify with the Canadian government and let them know all of the all of the uh, breeders, all of the steps, everything that's involved. They they need to know absolutely everything, and they're very very good. Now they're good to work with too. I had zero issues, uh, no problems whatsoever. They were first rate the whole way. Now, Ella, bring her here. Ella, come, Ella. By me, right here. Korea, by me. Hurry up. Hurry up. What? What? Now this is a model dog. And this is a, a pup is, is following the model dog. And when you're training a pup, if you don't have a model dog, it's much more, it's more difficult. Not, not hard with a dog like this. But with the model dog, it's a piece of cake. So Korea was over there. Rather than trying to call Korea, I'm just going to call the model dog and bring her in. Now, one of the videos that I want to do in this little learning series is uh, pulling on the lead. Karu, I got three females in heat, so there's a ton of noise. I got all the big boys out right now. I got them all out. So our key is tearing my fence up. Paws tearing up the other one. Tico is tearing up the out. Leaf is in the back going berserk. I put Tuba in with Karu. So Karu is at least not making too much noise. I even remotely go that direction. Mon is freaking. I did put Dakota in just for a few minutes. And Tupac, he's trying to get in on the action, but I told him to settle down. He's just making... Ark, you come over that fence, boy. You're being a lot of trouble. You sit down. Now, good boy. Ark, he can, he can talk in sentences, Ark. He's so smart. Yeah, he knows like a uh, dictionary. He's an incredibly smart, gifted dog, that arc. That's Ayla's brother. Ayla is like a wizard. She knows three languages. So, she knows Finnish, Canadian, and a little French. <laughs> She's bilingual in Canada. And she has some finish. Yeah, pretty funny. Now, Anya, she can speak two languages, too. She's pretty good. Yeah, that's good. Hey, Korea, you come here by me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hustle right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my girl. That's my girl. Is that a smart dog or what? Did you guys see that? She burnt all the way. This is a rock star dog. This dog's only eight and a half weeks old, nine weeks old. Super intelligent, super smart. Yeah, that's a Karoo and Kalia pup. So very, very good. I got a whole litter of them Karoo and Kai pups in there. Fantastic dogs. So I had put a program on that I would help families get, get a pup if they wanted to. So I delivered my first program pup yesterday. And I'm very excited and proud to have done that. It, it was awesome. So I have two more to do. And also, I am going to put a program together for a nurse. If there's a nurse wants a, wants a dog, she doesn't have to have kids or nothing. She's got to be a nurse. I'm going to do a program for her. All she's got to do is tell me she's a nurse and that's it. I'll do some kind of program. I'll help her out in a way to get this because they should have a bonus. They should have a hazard pay or something, and I can't just out and give it to them. So I can help in a in a roundabout way, and I can do something on a pup and give them one of the best pups I got and make make some something work out. So if there's a nurse wants a really really good pup, just to get out and walk after work and get some fresh air and get out of the hospital, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna make it work so uh, they can get a hold of me and. 
at, at this stage of the game, just doing one on the nurse program. So if you happen to be the first one to call, so be it. Um, but that program, I'll get on the site too. Korea, you come by me here. Right here. Hustle, hustle. Come here. No, 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 no. Korea, by me. By me. <laughs> Don't be goofing around. She talks. She's a communicator, that dog. Very smart dog. She's not listening. You never did that, did you, girl? Huh? Did you? You never did. Is this a good dog or what? Wow. This is a highly skilled dog, this dog. Super intelligent dog. Mentally stable. Very, very good dog. I went to Finland and got this uh, Ayla's mother to follow the guidelines. So Ayla's mother was imported as well. Ayla's father was imported, not by, not by the same. Uh, he went. He landed in a different country. So uh, he landed in the U.S. Russ and Beth uh, uh, brought him in. So they used a di little different technique down there. Anya came direct to Canada. So yeah, pretty cool. Well, that's a pretty good video. Where'd that little runt go? Where'd she go, Ayla? Korea, come by me. Yeah, let's wrap that up. So we got a blizzard going on. And uh, I went over the pass when I took that pup. And wow, talk about snowing up there. So we're, uh, we're in a snowstorm, and she's going to buckle down and drop about a foot on us today, I think. She's been coming down pretty heavy. So we'll see how much comes. But that should be a pretty good video. Oh, there's Korea. Why don't you get up here, Korea? Come on, get up here. Come say bye. Come on, Korea. Jesus. Where you been anyway? What have you been doing? What have you been doing? It's about time. It's about time you got up here. Jesus. I'm looking all over for you. I'm looking all over for you girls. You girls are good. You girls are good. 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 Good girls. Good. 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 Oh, yeah. Good.